a lot of people have been talking about Hassan. There is a a massive a massive uh, controversy going on around Hassan. Um, Hassan is permanently canceled. Um, it's it's over. Uh, there's no coming back from this because I hate to tell you, but Hassan Piker bought a house. Okay, everybody, it's been a really wonderful stream. I will see you all later. Uh, thank you all for being here. He bought a house, and uh, have a nice day. Of course, I'm kidding. I I I uh, I just I I just thought that would be very funny. Okay. <laughs> Okay, listen. So, um, yeah, I just went out to grab some milk. Exactly. We do a little trolling. Wait, so if Hassan is not a lefty for owning a house, does that make Bernie a right-wing chud for owning a house, publishing a book, and making more money? Yes. Okay. So, um... Aw, oh, don't worry. I won't, I won't abandon you. I was just... It was just a joke, okay? So, um... So, Hassan bought a house. Hassan bought a, uh, expensive house in L.A., Okay? Um, I'm looking forward to this, Demon Mama, because I'm told there's valid critiques here, but I'm not seeing it or hearing any of it. Okay, let me show you a video. Okay, this is the famous video that everybody that everybody talks about, and then we're gonna get it. We're gonna dive into the uh, into the nuance of it. Okay, but first we need to watch a funny video together. Okay, um, here we go. Hey guys. All right, are you ready? You all know this video, but we're gonna watch it anyway because it's great. Okay, this is a, a fucking great one. Okay. Look, okay, let's watch it together. Let's watch. Thank you so much for watching my video about how neoliberalism commodifies everything. I'm just a small lefty content creator on this platform, and you guys know how hard it is staying independent. That's why I'm going to ask that if you have anything to spare at all, please donate to my Patreon, and let's defeat neoliberal capitalism together. One year later. Guys, I have been blown away by your generosity. Thanks to your help, I'm able to improve my video quality and make even better video essays against capitalism. At this rate, we are closer than ever to a more inclusive, fairer society. So keep funding the revolution and buy my merchandise that just released. One year later. Guys, I am so proud of how much traction this channel is getting. We are already at $10,000 a month. The bourgeoisie is trembling. Remember guys, install Raid Shadow Legends and level up those characters so they too can get strong enough to defeat capitalism. And go to nordvpn.com slash jreg to hide from spooky authoritarian capitalist threats. One year later. I am now a libertarian. Surprise, this video is actually sponsored by NordVP. All right, everybody always skips the sponsorship part, of course. Um, the monocle, yeah. I am, everyone, I am here to announce to you, I am now a libertarian. I have reached, uh, I have reached the shocking level of making $6,000 off of my YouTube channel, so I've converted to libertarianism. Libertarian socialism! No, just kidding. Um, no, I'm just joking. But, but, okay, so, jokes aside, how do we talk about this thing? Okay. Oh, oh, let me be clear. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me be clear. I will literally never take a sponsorship for Raid Shadow Legends. I fucking hate that game with the depths of my soul. It is the most, it is the most, rep it is a representation of everything I hate about mobile gaming in one fucking game. They could not pay me enough. Fuck that game. Fuck it. Fuck it, fuck it. I, I, that is a level of, of, of fucking debasement that I could never do. I wouldn't be able to bring myself to do it. It's actually so bad. It's such a bad game. Of course. Well, listen, I don't, I don't hold it against you if you do. Um, but it's bad. It's so bad. Genshin is actually a good game. I'm not talking about it anymore. Fuck it. I hate that game. Fuck that game. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Okay? Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Okay, fair. Okay, fair. Fair.
but but it has not uh, 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 look okay look the point is you are all getting distracted okay all right look fuck who cares about genshin impact who cares about fucking raid shadow legends that's not the point as always fucking typical lefties fucking focusing on the wrong thing Fucking typical goddamn lefties talking about Raid Shadow Legends when we're trying to talk about fucking capitalism and whether Hassan needs to be canceled forever or not. Okay? Listen. Oh, don't you use that excuse on me. Intention's nasty. I have ADHD. There's... And I'm not getting... Hey, Fawn. Uh, do you think you... Oh, actually, never mind. I have plenty of soda. I never get distracted, okay? I fucking never get distracted. Okay, so, um, now, listen, uh, when it comes to Hassan, is there a problem of people's, uh, 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 of people's status in life, of their class, um, affecting their politics? Yes, frequently, constantly. It's almost impossible to not have it affect your politics to some degree. Uh, let's just be real about that. We all know that we are susceptible to biases of all types, okay? Um, and we are susceptible to changes in our material conditions, okay? Um, and if we find our... And this is the reason why we have... This is why lefties have a systemic critique, by the way. Just so you know. Because we recognize that the problem isn't like a bunch of individual bad apples... It's a system that encourages people passively and constantly to behave a certain way. Capitalism is like channels. It channels people into certain behaviors, and it takes a lot of energy to resist those channels. And many people, uh, not just energy, but time and, and, ex and experience and, and et cetera, et cetera. There's all this stuff that channels people into certain behaviors. That's why we recognize that, that a systemic critique is necessary, because we have to realize, like, where... Uh, where people are being pushed by the state of the system that they exist in. Okay? I'm going to have another cigarette. And it is true. Uh, it is a tale as old as time, right? The tale as old as can be. The idea of the sellout, right? Come on, everybody. We all know. Uh, there's a great bit. Oh, I can't show it on here because it's YouTube. But you all know. How many of you seen have seen Wayne's World? The scene where they do the advertisement, the, like, product placement in the movie? Have you ever seen that scene? It's a fucking great scene. Um, really funny. It's like, yeah, dude, I don't like being a, you know, I, I would never sell out. I would, I just, you know, I just, oh, God, I cut my finger. Good thing I have this walmart uh, equate brand gauze pad right here anyway i would never sell out i pr frankly find it very disgusting when these sorts of things happen that's the sort of thing that happens you know what i mean like that's what we're talking about Th that is a tale that is as old as can be the idea of somebody uh standing for something and then getting offered money and no no longer standing for that thing um but uh it happens. We know it happens. We we fucking know. I mean, everybody's seen this image, right? Uh, hold on. Um, what's his fucking name? Um, this is an old image. This is a dated image, but everyone's seen this fucking image, right? Everyone has seen the, uh, this one. I'm gonna open it up and show you. I know everybody's seen this. You're all gonna laugh when you see it because it's so classic. It's so fucking, it's such a classic image, right? Everybody's seen this image. Je Jeff Keeley surrounded by the Mountain Dew and the and the Mountain Dew and Doritos poster. The Doritos Pope. Yeah. Like classic, right? A bit dated, but classic. Um and so we know that it can happen. We know that selling out happens all the time. But there's another thing too. Which is that a lot of people, like, never actually think about what they mean when they call somebody a sellout. And they don't actually think about what they mean when they call somebody a hypocrite. Okay? Because, like, I don't think that Hassan is a hypocrite. And I think people who think 
Uh, oh, I love the Xbox Mountain Dew one. I was just thinking about that. Yes, we'll read that afterwards, Capo. I was literally just thinking about that, but it's not perfectly um, connected. So maybe, maybe call me cynical, okay? Uh, call me cynical, but I never interpreted uh, uh, Hassan as some kind of uh, like revolution now uh, style lefty. Uh, I have never interpreted Hassan as like a type who uh, doesn't who like doesn't believe that people shouldn't have comforts. For as far as I know, Hassan has always been pretty fixated on criticizing the richest of the rich, the billionaires. Which Hassan, by the way, is nowhere near. Yes, Hassan is very very well off. Hassan is incredibly well off, better more well off than I'll ever be. Well, more well off than most of us will ever be. But he's not even close to a billionaire. People can't even comprehend the difference between billionaires and uh, and millionaires and multimillionaires and multi-billionaires. The level of of difference between those is so great that your brain can't even comprehend it. Okay, it's ridiculous um, how different that is. Okay. It's not because they can't do math. It's just it's our brains struggle with big numbers. Now, there are some things to talk about. Because there is the question of whether you should live up to your principles. Now, this is a conversation that has come up all the time with regard to veganism. You all have seen me do veganism debates about this exact topic, discussing um, whether or not, like, you have a moral responsibility to immediately stop eating meat or whatever or whatever or whatever. There's a lot of discussions about this. And my position is that you, of course, that you should do your best to live your values, but it's not that simple. Sometimes living your values is very hard and if you're critiquing a system that makes it hard to live your values, then that's doubly true, right? Because you have acknowledged that it's almost impossible to live the way you wish to live because of the system that's in place. Like, think about it like this. I critique work, but I work all the time because I have to. I critique work as a concept, as a, as a staple of our society because I think that we shouldn't have it as a staple of our society, but that doesn't change the fact that it is right now, okay? And I do think there are examples of people who live very hypocritically. Uh, uh, everybody knows my favorite are the uh, the tankies. Um, hey, thank you so much, Paul M. Paul M says, I think you've got it in you to be as successful as Hassan someday. Thanks for the infotainment and keep at it. I'll do my best. I don't think I'll be that successful, but I'll do my best. Um... Thank you so much. There, uh, the, the, the category, you know, we all talked about the greatest example being like the Black Hammer, right? The Black Hammer, um, the Black Hammer people who were like, join the mouth. The scale of a billion do Whoa. dollars is really crazy. So right, let's, let's say this. one grain of rice is on. equivalent to 100K and 10 grains of rice would be then a million. Well, how much is a billion? So my Saturday night consisted of counting 10,000 grains of rice one by one, just to show you guys how much a billion dollars is. Of course I filmed it and of course I time-lapsed it and this is playing at, I don't even know, God knows how fast it's playing at, but. So now I'm proud to present to you the results. That is a billion dollars where each grain of rice is worth 100K. Look how much rice this is, guys. That's crazy. I just bought you like a Lamborghini right here and I didn't even notice it was gone. Here's a $5 million house in California. And oh, look, I still have all this money. If you guys like that content, please follow me. I drop a video on personal finance every day. Thanks. Do you see what I'm talking about? The scale of a billion dollars. This is Humphrey Talks. Cool, cool video. Cool fucking video. If you all want this to share around here, I'll drop it in a chat in case you want to share. Oh my God. Holy shit. Why does it do this? Oh my God. Why does it break? Oh my God. Why does it do that? It breaks... Why do they put so much shit? Okay, I can't share that. The link is, like, busted as fuck. 
Okay. Well, all right. Uh, it's Humphrey Talks. Okay. That is cursed. Okay? Listen. Um, so... Yeah, the scale is different. The scale is unbelievable. Hassan's Hassan's entire income in that analogy would be a couple of grains of rice. Jeff Bezos would be a mountain, a mountain of rice so big you can't even imagine. That's what I'm talking about. And that's the stuff that most lefties are talking about. The level of wealth hoarding that can truly upset a society. We know that Jeff Bezos has enough money to solve world hunger now that's how much he has so much wealth hoarded that people are literally starving as a result of him hoarding it not directly as a result but those resources are all hoarded in one place so um so what i'm trying to say is that uh is that there is a very real like it's not a um it's not a a a uh um it's not a hypocrisy to point out, uh, or, or it's not a bad critique to point out that like people, um, like that a millionaire, a millionaire leftist or a multi-millionaire leftist isn't even close to the same degree as a billionaire. Um, I don't think that's like excusing not living your values at all. I think there is a difference between, between those things. Being a billionaire is a level of wealth hoarding that is almost incomprehensible to most people. It's a level of wealth hoarding that is incomprehensible even to the people who have hoard that hoarded that wealth. Jeff Bezos literally said on record in an interview, he struggles to find ways to spend all of his money, which is one of the most disgusting things I can imagine. Hey, here we go. Oh, sick. Okay, here we go. All right, ready? Here we go. This is a website called... I've never seen this. Let's take a look. To scroll right, use shift with mouse wheel. Okay, here we go. Here's $1,000. Here is the U.S. median household income, a single pixel. Okay, you see this? Tiny pixel. That's the, that is $68,000. Damn, that's good money. I don't even make $68,000. That's fucking awesome. I wish I made $68,000. Here's $1 million. As you can see, that's quite a lot larger. Here's $1 billion. $1 billion. How many, how many fucking average Americans are sorted in a single billionaire? How many Hassans are, tr are, are inside one single billionaire? Then, 185 billion, the wealth of Jeff Bezos. Down here is the 80 million marker. That is 80 million. That is 80 of these squares is contained just in the first inch. Now, let's go. I'm still scrolling. Jeff is so wealthy that it's quite literally unimaginable. I can't even see the scroll bar. Ready? Here we're gonna go. I'm gonna grab the scroll bar. Ready? Now it's going into this. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Oh shit! It's so tiny. Here we go. No single human needs or deserves this much wealth. Here we go. Can we even get to the end of it? I don't think you can manually scroll. Ah, there we go. Finally. You saw how long that goes. So while people are getting mad about Hassan, the tiny green square, or like, let's say Hassan is like five tiny green squares, they're forgetting about this. And watch this. The 400 richest Americans. It's about to get fucking hog wild here. There you go. We finally reached the end. 
I, you can't even comprehend it. That scroll bar, like, holy shit. The scroll bar, look at this. It's like, it's, it's tiny. I, I, can you even see the scroll bar down here? There it is. Look at how small it is. Look at how much I had to draw. That's just the top 400. Just 400 Americans have that much money. Okay? That's not Hassan. Hassan is in not, not in the top 400 richest Americans. Not even close. He's not even fucking close. Okay? That's, yeah, 3.2 million Hassans. 3. 3.2, you could turn 3.2 million Americans into a Hassan right now, and that would just take off the top uh, 400 people of America. Oh, and yes, Hassan already t pa pays more taxes than Bezos. Um, like, an incredible amount. Like, he pl he pays a, a percent. He probably doesn't, well, actually, I don't even know how much Bezos does, because Bezos literally might pay zero taxes sometimes. Um... And, uh, and, uh, Hassan always is going to pay taxes. In fact, Hassan probably pays very high taxes because Hassan is a contractor. And contractors, uh, pay a lot of taxes. Do you know how much I pay? Do you know how much I pay in taxes? Yeah, Bezos might get a tax rebate. Yeah. He might get more money. I pay about 30% in my taxes. 30% of my income and that is after the slices that YouTube takes that is after the slices that Twitch takes that is after the slices that pay PayPal takes I still have to pay 30% now sometimes I get a little back usually I don't so what I'm trying to say is that the conversation around whether or not Hassan is bad for having a for buying a nice house is very very silly to me and to me it sort of reeks of of a lack of perspective now I don't really hate people or think that lefties are bad or anything like that because um because it is hard to conceptualize these numbers it's very very fucking hard to um conceptualize these numbers however However, let's take a second and let's acknowledge what is what what points of critique are valid in this in this case, okay? All right? First of all, there have been occasions in the past where I would say that Hassan has not been 100% fair. Um I mean, for example, there's the whole there was the whole editor situation. Hassan got in a big income fight with his editor because he was barely paying his editor. And he like gave them a laptop and then defended himself being like, "Oh, I I gave them the means of production." But that's not uh, that's not actually again, that's not actually a good argument. That's a pretty bad argument. Um we have some examples of of other of other stuff like this. I mean, what? The current affairs, right? Didn't current affairs just have a big falling out over this that they wanted to become a co-op? And then, what's his name was like, uh, I'd rather burn it to the ground. There are situations where people forget their incentives. Want to talk about another one? Here's another one. Are you ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be firing some shots here. Okay? Here we go. You want to know a great example of how you see this? Watch how people's um, ecological prescriptions change as they make more income a lot of lefties as they make more money suddenly start to forget about how important it is to advocate for extremely radical environmental change people get comfortable they start to say things like oh well you know we don't have to we don't we we shouldn't have to give up any modern luxuries because la 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 la, la. well because you're comfortable now because you're comfortable and you're going to continue being comfortable. Well, depends on your level. But you have the perception that you're going to continue being comfortable. And you don't want to give up that comfor comfort. And the reality is no one wants to give up that comfort. And that's precisely why we have to challenge these things. No one wants to give up their comfort. But that doesn't mean... That means that we need to take the issue seriously. Not, not mild out on our critiques. It means we need to go, wow, I'm probably going to have to take a quality of living hit. What about my viewers? 
What about my, what about the people out there who don't have an income like me? What happens? Jesus, that's pretty bad, Lenoira. Didn't like the top five billion. I don't know that stat, but it's possible. Yeah. So the problem that we run into, the problem that you run into is that sometimes as you make more money, as you, as you fit in better in the capitalist system, you sometimes start to forget what it was like to not fit into the system and your advocacy starts to change. And I think there's room to criticize people on that. It's not it that we're going to have to take a small quality of life hit to help out the community at large. Wait, wait, I disagree with that framing, Big Orange Jew, and let me explain why. Big Orange Jew says, yep, we're all going to have to take a small quality of life hit to help out the community at large. No, that's not how it's going to work. You are going to have a quality of life hit pushed on you. You, It won't be your choice. It's not going to be your choice. It's going to be pushed on you. And it's going to be pushed on every creator in this space. It's going to be pushed on everyone who isn't a fucking billionaire. And it's already happening. It's already been happening for a long time. Let me tell you something. Have you noticed how computers are crawling up in price? Anybody? Anybody notice that? How computer parts are getting more and more expensive? You might even be making more money, but I bet you can't, I bet you can't fucking afford a computer as easily as you used to be able to. That's a little weird, isn't it? I'm making more money and I, and buying a computer now was 10 times more expensive than trying to buy a computer a few years ago. Even though I have, I make way more money than I used to. It's really fucking hard to build a computer these days. You know what else is going up? The cost of eating out. You know what else is going up? The cost of subscription services. You know what else is going up? Basically everything. Basically everything is going up. But our, your income isn't. Weird how that works. It's almost like... And you know what else is going up? Housing. Have we seen that? We talked about that. Remember when I did the housing apocalypse? Where I talked about how the price of housing has gone up through the pandemic by a lot? Weird how that works, right? It's not that it's not that people have to have to lay down and go, yes, I'll give my money to charity. Yes, I'll give my money away. And that's going to fix the problem. No, the reality is that the quality of life changes are are rapidly approaching all of us. Even those of us who do make more like I make more than I used to. I don't really make like great li like a, a great living right now. I make a decent, a comfortable like I'm comfortable in my little apartment and everything like that. Um. But everything is going up in price, which means only the rich people will be able to keep having it. And more and more people are falling below the threshold by which you will be considered rich enough to have nice things. And it keeps going. Housing is one of those. Um, you know, decades ago, if you were at my level of income, you could get a house. You could get a house loan. I could have a house at my level of income right now a couple of years, a, a couple of like a decade or two ago. Isn't that wild to think about? But you can't anymore. In fact, Hassan even struggled to find a house that was in his area without having to move into rural America away from everything that he does. It's kind of weird. So what I'm trying to point out here is that unfortunately... The quality of life, the quality of life changes are coming for us. They're coming for you. They're, they might already be on you. Some of us have already felt it. Many of us have already felt it. I've already felt it. But they're coming for you too. And they're coming for the, your favorite content creators as well. None of your favorite content creators are rich enough to avoid this. And it sucks because um, if you continue pretending as though this isn't happening. If you keep advocating like, oh yeah, we don't have to lose any of our luxuries. We don't have to lose any of that. You're going to be blindsided by it. And the, the infrastructure won't exist so that people can still live good lives. Let me ask you this. What would you do? Let's just do a little, um, let's just do a little, uh, a little, a little thought experiment real quick. Okay. Right now, it is no longer affordable if you make under $100,000 a year to buy a personal computer. 
Okay, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a poll. Ready? Okay, here we go. If 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 you had to make a hundred thousand dollars to get, to to be able to you know have the spare cash to get a personal computer. Holy fucking shit. 97 and 98 95% of the audience. 90% of you are not going to have a computer anymore. That's coming. That's that's where we're going to get. They're going to keep getting more expensive until you can't get a gaming computer anymore. You might have to just get some sort of budget computer, whatever they are in the future. And budget computers suck. What happens... Let me ask you this. What happens if iPhones keep going up in price? If Android phones keep going up in, fri in price? Soon, if you don't make a lot of money, you're just going to have to have some shit-ass bootleg phone. And they have gone up. They have kept going up in price. What are you going to do if you and nobody that you know has a computer anymore? How are you going to how are you going to enjoy the things that you enjoy right now? I bet a lot of you play fucking video games to 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 feel good in this hell world. I bet a lot of you like to browse the internet on your computer or work on things on your computer. What are you going to do? Go to the library? Have you gone to your local library? Have you seen the computers at your local library anytime soon? Here's the thing. I recommend you do that. If you answered no to my question, go and check your local library and see if you if see if you'd be able to enjoy the quality of life you have now having even considering that you'd have to drive to the library during open hours. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Libraries are great. I'm not saying libraries are bad. I'm saying we haven't been focusing on this. We haven't been thinking about any of this. Assuming you have a car. Yeah. Do you know what else is going up in price? Cars. You know what's really interesting? What happens? And this is a real future. What happens when... You can't buy a house, you can no longer afford a car, but you have to keep working. Maybe jobs are going to start offering you a debt plan from your job so that you can have a car to get to work. Maybe there's going to be a whole bunch of weird, scummy car sharing services. Maybe there's going to be car, sh I mean, we already have car share services, micro microtransactions, Uber. Where if you want to be able to go to work, you have to go and uh, and rent an Uber to even get to work. We don't have public infrastructure. It's commodifying every inch of our lives. is being is crawling forward. And as the as the as our environment gets work, as climate change gets worse, this is only going to become more so. It becomes more expensive to get the parts that are needed. It becomes more expensive to ship those things, and increasingly these spaces will become gentrified we need solutions we need actual meaningful solutions and if people are deluding themselves into thinking that you're going to be able to have the exact same quality of life forever maybe you will but everybody else won't yeah exactly capo Let me show you something a little scary. You want to see something a little spooky? Let me see something a little spooky real quick. I'm going to spook you. I'm going to give you a I'm going to give you a good little spook. Oops, hold on. I'm on the wrong account. Hold on a second. I'm going to give you a little shock. Okay? You ready? <laughs> this is not good. Okay. Where's my where's my link? I lost my I lost track of my link. Where is it here? Here we go. Here's the first one. Let me open this up, and then I'll give you the second one. Okay? 
Where is it here? Here we go. All right, let's take a look at this one real quick. Okay, look at this. Amazon has built a massive shipping empire during COVID, mainly by forcing sellers to use their internal shipping service. Most of that growth has been through delivery stations, small hubs that service the last mile that have enabled Amazon to cut its reliance on UPS and the US Postal Service. Here we go. In just the last two years, Amazon's delivery empire has gobbled up six Disneyland's worth of real estate in the US. The internet retailer's vast network of warehouses has nearly doubled in size since August 2019, as Amazon's newest space race kicked into high gear. Look at this here. Fulfillment centers, delivery stations, Amazon Air Hubs, Prime Now facilities, and sortation facilities. They have just been exploding. They have been, and this doesn't include Whole Foods or grocery facilities. This doesn't even include groceries. This is just shipping facilities. Increasingly, the most readily available job across the country is an Amazon delivery person. They are buying up. And I bet you, if you go around your town, you will see them. They've appeared here. They are buying up empty defunct buildings, turning them into delivery centers, and then saying, hey, we got a whole lot more jobs. For Amazon. And we know what the work conditions are at Amazon, and we know what the pay is at Amazon. Did you know that a lot of Amazon delivery is, uh, is literally gig economy did you fucking know that do you know there's a whole bunch of gig economy stuff where you use an app to get deliveries and then you go pick up the deliveries and take them fuck that's scary to think about what if soon the only job that you can get is at an amazon delivery center where you need your own car and an app just like it would be to, to run uber and you have to go over there. You have to, got to wake up at fucking 6 a.m. in the morning when all of the deliveries are needed. And you got to hope that you get in there and you hope that you get some tickets that will earn you some money. Because that's reality for a lot of Americans already. That is like Americans. A lot of Americans are living that life already. We read the article about that on stream here. Last year, we read this on stream. Hmm little spooky so what i'm trying to point out is that we need to have a realistic understanding of the state of things we need to have to we need to be able to confront this and go wait a second this is fucked we need to start coming up together with solutions actual solutions i'm not talking about policy prescriptions that you can mail to your your representative we need to have solutions or our lives will become difficult we need to prepare and take care of each other now. And I don't have all the ideas. That's why I need you all, all of you people out there watching my show and watching all these lefty creators and maybe canceling Hassan or maybe anti-canceling Hassan. You all need to be thinking about how the fuck do we actually preserve a good life when this is taken from us? Because it is. Because it fucking is. And if you don't believe me, look how, how the housing market gentrifies. Look at what happens, how in increasingly in every major American city, the people who once lived there are now priced out. They get pushed further out or they get pushed into ghettos. And that's it. And the quality of life goes down and the rent goes up. You live in increasingly built buildings that are in increasing states of disrepair. And then rich people have all their nice houses that they've gentrified and raised the prices that you will never be able to afford. That's going to happen with phones. It's already happening with cars. It's going to happen with computers. It's going to happen with all kinds of things. Yes, uh, it, it could happen here is on my is on my listen list. It is not despair and doom. I agree with you. The solution, the despair and doom is what guarantees this future. However, think about this. Maybe we can learn. Maybe we can learn from other people around the world who've had this happen to their country already 
You know that a lot of people around the world are so poor that they can't afford a computer. So they figure out ways to do it. Maybe they all pool together and they work something out and they buy a nice computer that you can share. There's a whole bunch of potential solutions out there. But if you want to, ha if you want to have a quality life, maybe you, maybe we learn to not get, maybe we, I mean, we're going to have to learn to get by without a computer for a lot of us. I can't. My entire livelihood is on a computer. If, if I wasn't able to, I will do, I, and, and they have me by the balls in that sense, because they know that I'll be able to, that I will do anything to buy a computer, because otherwise, I won't be able to work. But you notice that, like, you want to notice something that's scary here? Look at it, let's look at a, let's look at a country like, like Cuba, okay? We're not going to talk about communism or socialism or anything like that. But one thing I want to point out about Cuba, does anybody know how many cars in Cuba are cars that have been repaired almost all of them most of the cars on the road in cuba are repaired used cars that are kept up that are up kept there's not a whole lot of use of new cars on the road in cuba but guess what you want to know what else yeah they're like old things but guess what have you noticed how expensive cars are getting in America and how basically every single car is riddled with proprietary parts that you literally can't replace? Do you know what that does, right? You know what that fucking means, right? If you can't fix the car that you bought, if you can't buy a new car, you're fucked. You can't repair it. We have oceans of unrepairable cars on the road in America right now. Cars that are so junky and so expensive and so proprietary that you can't fix it even if you wanted to. You couldn't, you couldn't sustain it even if you had the skills. So not only is it totally wasteful, but it's also going to force a lot of people onto that capitalism treadmill. Because if you can't repair your car, you gotta have a car or else you'll starve. You're gonna become homeless like the homeless people. You don't wanna become like them. Come on, go work a few more hours so you can afford that car, so you can stay off the street, right? Yes, I already know a lot about right to repair. Right to repair is something that I believe in very strongly. Right to repair is the idea that um, that you basically that that companies shouldn't be able to lock you out of fixing your own devices. This uh, most the one that people frequently use um, is John Deere tractors. Did you know um, that John Deere tractors? I don't know. I think they still do this, but John Deere tractors, which are mind you a necessity for rural farmers, you have to have a tractor, and John Deere is the primary type of tractor out there. John Deere tractors had a, implanted a computer chip that made it impossible to repair the tractor without taking it to an official John Deere service center, which is expensive, which is annoying. And it makes John Deere a lot of money because they, you needed a special key, uh, not a literal key, but you needed a special code, a little re remote thing to be able to unlock the parts to repair it. And the parts you can only get from John Deere. They don't allow second-hand parts unless you're buying it off the black market so right to repair says no you can't do that somebody who buys a device has the right to be able to fix that device you, you a right to repair would say you don't have a right to suppress um third parties from making replacement parts you don't have a right to lock a car um so that it can only be repaired in an official repair station you don't have a right to lock your laptop apple's like this apple computers their warranties are voided if you don't take it to an official Apple repair center. If you try to repair an Apple product, any Apple product yourself, you avoided the warranty. Huh, I wonder why they would void that. I wonder why they would do that. Oh, they talked to a, they talked to a, oh, that's cool. They talked to a right to repair one. Oh, I'll check that out. That sounds awesome. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's really fucking sinister. It's super sinister. And all of this is about consolidating power 
and money into the hands of a handful of corporations so that they can lock you out of lock you in with proprietary stuff yeah the iphones have special screws there's all kinds of things like this i think right to repair uh should ex should just be an across the board thing that we have but we're a long way off from that at least on a legal level there are all kinds of ways to get around this on a uh i don't want to say illegal a legal uh, it's not, like, illegal to repair something. It's just that right now, companies can punish you for it. They can void your warranty. Um, like, something that can happen. Here's another example. It's not just voiding the warranty, by the way. If, you, um, if, you ha if you've opened up, like, an Apple computer, the Apple stores won't even repair it for you. They won't touch it. They'll say, basically, that they're like, nah, we're not going to repair it if you've opened it up. And that means that you're too scared to even open it up. You just go straight to them and pay whatever they charge you. $300, $200, whatever. Because if you open it up, they just, they'll just they just say, nah, you might have messed things up. We're not going to touch it. Not all stores do this, but some do. Yeah, sometimes it's way more expensive than a few hundred. Depends. Oh, yeah, they, they will encourage you to buy a brand new one. Yeah, for sure. Aren't older cars easier to repair? My uncle did it all the time with cars. YouTube tutorials saved him from outrageous mechanic fees. Yes, older cars are easier to repair because older cars had less proprietary parts because it hadn't, we hadn't gotten to this state yet. There's a whole, oh my God, there's a, there's a whole book about this called Wrecked. It's a book called Wrecked. It's about the auto industry and how proprietary parts and a change to the labor the the labor organization of the auto industry has completely fucked the automotive market. I have no idea how to answer that question, Viet Pam. I think that it's mostly outlived its usefulness, but... It used to be that there were lots of hackers who would circumvent this shit, but corporations buy them out and pay them millions of dollars to come work on security. Yes, that's true. The um, hackers, uh, the hacker spaces have been, um, hacker spaces have been, uh, what's it called? Uh, Co-opted. They've been absorbed. Gayfesh says, it's not just that. I once needed to replace the screen on my iPhone, but I, because I'm on their beta release, so I was using the next iPhone release, they to told me they couldn't replace the screen for me without erasing my entire device because I was using their own software that was on a beta release. Yeah, see? The, the, the small, you know, the small print will fuck you up. Small print will fuck you right up. Rent to own, of course, yes. That's all the thing. You know that you know where a lot of people get their shit now? Fucking rent a center. Rent a center, which is just oh god. Just so unethical. So disgusting. It's actually already illegal for companies to say void your warranty if you try to repair them. If you go to Jay's two cents, he made a video on this. The problem is the companies still get away with it and there's almost no legal reper re repercussions for companies that still do this. Yeah. They know that if you want to challenge them on it then you have to take them to court. And they have a team, they have a literal de legal department that they can destroy you from orbit with. So what? So, and, and here's the other thing. You want to know something that, that uh, here's a quick, here's a quick thing. Um, did you know that corporations often do things that are technically illegal and, and there's nothing you can fucking do about it because they call your bluff? And the worst case scenario is that you win in court and they pay you $2,000, but 9 million other people said, fuck it, I'll just pay whatever the cost is so they've already made money. Interesting how that works too. Yeah. It's pretty fucked. So... All of this is to say that I think there is valid critiques against uh, socialist and leftist content creators sometimes losing their politics as their material conditions change. But I think that is very, very different um, than, than just saying that Hassan is bad or a hypocrite uh, for buying a house. I think that's a fucking stupid argument. And we've, as we've just shown, mathematically, it's fucking stupid as well. Okay? Mathematically, it's motherfucking stupid as well. Because 
you could have a hundred Hassans and you still haven't even become a visible patch on Bezos' income. Thank you very much, Paul M. Deeply appreciate it. Unfortunately, I think most accurate preview of the future is in dystopias like Ready Player One and Sorry to Bother You, where employees live and work at their job location, their lives controlled by a Monopoly Corp. Yeah. It reminds me of how insurance companies are fucking healthcare. So imagine that with computers. Wait a second. That's already happened. Watch this. Ready? I'm going to blow your fucking minds. Are you, are you fucking ready? Wh how many of you have bought a new phone recently? Do you know how the process of getting a phone is? You don't buy a new phone anymore. When you go in, you sign up for a plan, and then they say, okay, your 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 activation cost is $25 a month for the line, and it's $35 a month for the, fo for the phone. You lease the phone. And then the two years comes up, and they give you an upgrade, which just renews that payment. You continually pay $35 a month, $45 a month. Whatever it is. Forever. Forever. For fucking forever. Nobody buys phones anymore. What are you going to do? Come up with $900 cash? The fuck? And they don't even have cheap phones anymore, Dizzy. Did you know that some of the cheap phones are almost as expensive as a, new, as a new phone? And it's literally like a flip phone that you can't even fucking text on? They do that intentionally. This is the manufacturing of consent part. They don't stock old phones anymore. Because they would just rather you be forced into buying the new one. Some places do sell old phones, but it is increasingly rare, and they usually have very few options. And some people, yeah, if you're really good at it, and you're really savvy with phones, you might be able to fucking find a, a cheaper phone. But most people can't do that reasonably. Some people can, but we need to baby teach them. Because otherwise, we are looking at a, a, a increasing a, a, a steady crawl of people like you and me, life, life quality going down. People like Hassan, even, it, are going to experience the quality of their life going down. Now, Hassan is probably going to be insulated for quite some time. But if things get more and more intense, that's not necessarily true. People who make Hassan's money... Hassan is probably going to get priced out of L.A. soon enough. Capo says, tip for anyone trying to get a phone on the cheap. Most manufacturers have phones that are comparable to their flagship models, but are scaled down for bulk purchases for businesses. They don't advertise them, but they do sell them direct to consumer. If you just need a decent smartphone, but want to save some money, look for the business models. Hey, that's a good idea. See, there you go. There's some stuff. Yeah, they've switched to... Every everybody's been leasing phones for so long. Well, he doesn't own his house, actually. The bank owns his house. Hassan's main fear was his security because they recently burned down a streamer's house. Well, that's very silly. This Hassan thing proves that Twitter has no attention span. Yeah. No, he didn't buy it outright. Nobody buy Almost no one can buy a house outright. Banks don't even want you to buy a house outright. Banks want you on the mortgage because then you can pay the mortgage and if an econ economic issue happens, they can take the house back from you. Yeah. They don't like it when you buy cash. They want you to to finance it. You can. It is possible to buy a house outright. But it's not common anymore. Especially in a place like LA. So he doesn't own his house. And if the if there's an economic crash, or if Twitch blows itself up because it, it pulls an OnlyFans, which we're about to talk about, Where do you think you're going to be? Who do you think got... Do you know how many people got their houses foreclosed on in 2008 to 2012? Do you know how many fucking people? And the reason that is, is not because these people necessarily couldn't afford their house. They could. It's just that 
it was convenient for the bank to be able to take the house back after collecting money off of you through your mortgage for a couple of years. It's an ingenious scam. It's a society-wise scam where the bank gets to keep your house and you've been paying them the entire time.